I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Welcome to the Black Excellence and Abundance Channel. El Haj Malik El Shabazz, Malcolm X. Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Frederick Douglass, Harriet Tubman, George Washington Carver, Rosa Parks, these are all great icons of the black community. Household names. These are great people that we've read about, learned about, did all kinds of reports about. There's all kinds of stories about these great icons of the black community. However, there are so many other great black people whose names we don't know. People in all walks of life, in business, in music, in medicine, in science, in exploration. And today, we continue our series on great unsung heroes, men who built Black Wall Street. We highlight John the Baptist Stratford. Mr. J.B. Stratford, another founding father of Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma. J.B. arrived in Tulsa, Oklahoma via railroad in 1898 with his wife, Augusta. J.B. was the son of a former Kentucky slave whose name was Caesar. Although a slave, J.B.'s father actually did learn how to read. And that is another untold story in black history. A lot of slaves actually did know how to read, even though it was illegal at the time. He and his wife met at Oberlin College in Ohio. They are named as the first blacks to enter and finish Oberlin. Future Stratford from the J.B. clan were college graduates and several became lawyers, as we will touch on some of them in this video. By 1863, Caesar, JB's father, was reading well. He read about the Emancipation Proclamation and he petitioned his enslaver for his freedom. While traveling from Woodfield County, Kentucky to Stratford, Ontario, Caesar was granted his freedom. Caesar gave himself the last name Stratford after the city in Ontario, changing the T in Stratford to a D. Caesar worked and saved his money. Upon returning to Kentucky, he passed the lessons he learned onto his family. He executed his plan, liberating his family from slavery and giving them a proper last name. Caesar's firstborn was John the Baptist Stratford reinvesting in his father's vision and named to become an Indiana University trained attorney. JB's interests range from social justice and racial solidarity to real estate development, which he applied to an influx of black Americans streaming into the Indian territory of Tulsa, Oklahoma. JB Stratford's empire was comprised of real estate income from two dozen rental properties worth nearly $2 million. The Stratford Hotel at 301 North Greenwood was his crown jewel. At the time, it was the largest Black-owned, Black-operated, and Black-guest-only hotel in America. The structure housed 54 modern living rooms 
a gambling hall, dining room, saloon, and pool hall. Jazz from the Stratford Hotel and the Commodore Cotton Club across the street filled Greenwood residents with the joy and freedom to dance and play without repercussions. This was true freedom. If they could do it then, we can do it now. Much of Tulsa's white community disapproved. They also disapproved of J.B. Stratford, who litigated against the railroad for not providing proper black accommodations. So he set out to do it on his own, and he did. This very brave and courageous entrepreneur stirred the pot regarding illegal segregation and publicly railed against Oklahoma's Jim Crow law. He also voiced outrage about black lynchings of peace-loving American neighbors by mobs. J.B. Stratford's ambitious and engaging granddaughter, Jewel, stood on some pretty solid shoulders. Her dad, C.F. Stratford, was a pioneer civil rights attorney and co-founder of both the National Bar Association and the Cook County Bar Association. Jewel Stratford LaFontaine Mancarias was the first female African-American Deputy Solicitor General of the United States, an official in the administration of President George H.W. Bush, and an attorney in Chicago. She also was considered by President Richard Nixon as a possible nominee to the Supreme Court of the United States. Jewel Strafford married Jack Rogers, who served in World War II as one of the first Tuskegee Airmen. This distinguished World War I veteran was once denied entrance into college because they didn't allow black people in there. Rogers went home, put on his military uniform, and returned to the law school declaring, I just served my country. You are going to put me in this law school. The law school finally admitted their first black students. Subsequently, Jack Rogers and Jewel Stratford were among the first blacks to gain admittance to the University of Chicago Law School. This determined gentleman was not to be denied. For the past 25 years or so, the Cook County State's Attorney's Office has been recognizing distinguished attorneys and judges within the African-American community with the C.F. Stratford Award. Who was C.F. Stratford, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. He was the son of J.B. Stratford. He owned a string of funeral homes and did some investigation for the state of Illinois. He had an official badge and a gun, and he was a no-nonsense businessman and attorney. After the bombing of Black Wall Street in Tulsa, J.B. moved to Chicago, where he attempted to duplicate his fortune in his new hometown. Mr. Stratford's legacy lived on through his children, his grandchildren, and even to this day. Many people have expressed interest in supporting these type of efforts to this day. Well, I'm happy to say that an organization that you can find on blackwallstreet.org is doing just that. Rebuilding Black Wall Street. Black Wall Street USA, I will be reading their mission statements in places like Louisiana. At Black Wall Street, Louisiana, our energies are investing in future generations, leaving them a bright financial and entrepreneurial future. In Texas, with this spiritual initiative, our goal is to promote great sales opportunities for Black-owned businesses with access to the right resources. We bring synergy 
to Black Wall Street to communities all over Texas. In Alabama, Black Wall Street Alabama is leading the movement in financial literacy and wealth education. In Florida, the Black Wall Street Florida team are dedicated to addressing many fundamental issues that face our community. Implementation of our many initiative efforts is by no means any easy feat, but through cooperation and community empowerment, we believe we can facilitate progress in many crucial areas. In Tennessee, reinforcing our commitment to Tennessee, Black Wall Street Tennessee is dedicated to building long-term structures and implementing initiatives to strengthen Chattanooga, Knoxville, Memphis, and Nashville. Believe it or not, folks, there's even a Black Wall Street effort on the motherland. Yes, folks, in Africa. And there's even a pilgrimage to Tulsa, Oklahoma in 2021 from May 30th through June 6th to celebrate the 100th year of Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So you see, folks, these efforts are ongoing. So please visit blackwallstreet.org because there's an effort going on as we speak to rebuild Black Wall Street. And I know it will be successful. In our How Wealthy Was Black Wall Street, we stated that there was no telling how wealthy Black Wall Street would have been to this day. Well, folks, we have a revision. It is estimated that Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma, would have had an annual revenue stream of $310 billion within those historical 40 square blocks at a rate of $8.611 billion per Greenwood District block. That's every block would have been worth $8.6 billion. Make no mistake about it. Not only was Black Wall Street real, but it is real. And what was before will be again. Only bigger and better this time. And nothing will stop the new Black Wall Street. What they did then, we will do now. The Black Excellence and Abundance Channel, where Black history is every day. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And as always, never forget that thou art rich.